Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now today we're trying something a wee bit different. So instead of a retrospective or a opinion of a game or something new that's coming out, I'm trying my hand at a guide. So this guide is going to be focusing on what are, in my opinion, the top three guns in Escape from Tarkov for leveling up to about level 10 or level 15 or so. Now just before we get started, apologies if anyone was hoping for a retrospective this weekend. There will be one next week, so just hold on a wee bit longer and we'll have one out next Saturday. But without further ado, let's get started. So in no particular order, I'm going to be starting here with my top three guns, and we're going to be starting with the SKS. So this overall is probably, in my opinion, the most well-rounded gun for getting up to those starting 10 or 15 levels. It's a assault carbine, 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridge, and just so you know, I'm talking about the SKS or the OP SKS, which are pretty much the same thing, except for a bit of attachment support and obviously the colour. So for the positives for this gun, I'm giving it, it's quite easy to acquire, so you can buy it with cash or find it on scavs quite often. It's a fix for multiple ranges, so it's really good at medium and long range. Not so good at short range because it's quite a long gun, but it can do work if you need it to. It's pretty low recoil for the type of cartridge it fires, so it's relatively easy to handle and the iron sights are also really good. So you can see targets pretty clearly and there's a good view above the gun so you can use it pretty effectively at most ranges without a optic. And the cartridge it comes with is also pretty powerful so the 7.62 by 39 is quite a good penetration round for taking down armor. Even the base cartridge the PS is pretty decent and can basically penetrate armors up to the top couple of tiers. Now the downsides with the SKS um, Basically calling out the 20 round magazine can sometimes be a bit ineffective. Compared to most other guns you'll be finding 30 rounds or more. So the 20 round magazine can sometimes be a bit limiting but the semi-auto firing style of the gun means you shouldn't be spraying a lot so those 20 rounds should do a lot of work. So also there's some limited attachment support for these guns. So the normal SKS which is the more darker color one can take everything from the polymer stock to the sound suppressor um, or the 10 round magazine and the same with the OP SKS which is that lighter color one on the right except the OP can also mount dovetail optics so you can get a mount for that and put on basically any optic in the game so 4x scopes, red dot sights all that kind of stuff which is really helpful for those longer range uh, encounters. And something I mentioned a bit earlier with the range issue is that in close quarters since the gun is physically quite long it can be a bit difficult to use in kind of the say the dorms or factory uh, just because since of its length it can kind of stick up into the air probably more often than other guns but it's not too bad as long as you can kind of mark your targets and stay at a semi-decent range with them. So the alternative to the SKS I'm going to give is the Vepa 136. So a pretty similar gun, it takes the same cartridge normally you'll find it with a 30 round magazine instead of the 20 and there's a lot more attachment support with it as well. Now the reason I'm giving it to the SKS is basically because of the recoil and the iron sights. While the iron sights are pretty good in the 136, the recoil makes it so it's quite hard to stick on a target unless you've got lots of attachments which you can't really do reliably at the low levels. So even though the 136 is a great gun and I'd recommend it, I'd probably go with the SKS if I had the choice. All right, next up we've got the AK-74N and the AK-74M. So I'm kind of bundling those two up because they're pretty similar except the M has a folding stock and comes with a few different parts at its base spec. So the main reasons I'm putting this in my top three is mainly because of its versatility. So it can be used as a long range semi-auto kind of sniper in a way or it can also be used close range, full auto, spray and pray kind of gun and there's tons of attachment support for it which means you can basically spec it to whatever you need it to do whether that's like I said a short range or a super long range encounter and it's also with multiple fire rates so you can keep it semi-auto or you can go full auto if you need to. Now the main downsides to this and why a lot of people actually don't run these guns is because of its caliber so it's an assault rifle and it's 545 by 39 millimeter and that means its round in the game is not as good as the 7.62 especially when it comes to penetration especially with the base rounds which normally you'll find are the PS or the PRS rounds. So the armor penetration isn't quite up to snuff so in the most common rounds you'll find for this gun especially the only ones you can buy at the low levels 
you'll find it doesn't penetrate armor very well so it doesn't work very well against other players who are rocking even mid-tier armor so for that reason a lot of people don't like it but i still think it's a solid gun it's great for taking out scavs and if you can hear they'll line up say face or headshots it works really well the other downsides i'll be giving it is that you can only get it as a barter at level one so you can't just flat out buy it with cash you can at level two but level one you just have to either find it which isn't too uncommon and there's some spawns for it around and you might find the odd scav with it here and there but otherwise you need to barter for it with prep or level one so you can see on the right there we've got 11 types of ammo for this gun so you kind of need to know what it is if you don't want to use the US round thinking you're going to penetrate armor when the US rounds are not very good at penetrating armor at all and you'd rather be using a BP round. So you need to kind of know what your ammo types are which can be a bit confusing and maybe a bit daunting for new players. And like I said the cartridge is generally weaker than its 7.62 variant and both are common cartridges to find so generally you'll have more stopping power with the 7.62 rifles like the SKS or the uh, 136. Now the alternative I'm going to give to the AK-74N and M is probably going to be just the AKM which is kind of a cross between these guns and the previously mentioned SKS and Bethel 136 pretty much looks like an AK-74 except it takes 7.62 rounds so the gun's got more recoil but the round is that kind of higher penetration round and you can have it full auto so the recoil can get pretty intense and the guns are less common to find probably overall so if you can slap a foregrip on it maybe a couple more attachments to lower that recoil the gun should do a lot more work overall so that's the alternative I'm going to give for the AK-74. Now lastly in my top three I'm giving this one to the Saiga 12 gauge, it's the semi-automatic shotgun, takes five round magazines and it's 12 by 70 millimeter buckshot or slug. So the reason I'm giving it to this is that it just demolishes in close quarters. So even at kind of short to medium range it can do really well. The really solid point about the buckshot is that since it fires so many little pellets and any time you hit the face in this game is an instant kill. You can get pretty lucky with a little pallet of buckshot going into someone's face even at a decent range. So it can work really well for that and with the 5 plus the 1 in the cartridge shots that you'll have you can kind of just spam this thing and normally just go for the face unless they've got a face shield in which case probably want to go for the legs and it can do a lot of work. Another positive is that it's got tons of attachments so you can put on foregrips, different stocks, optics compensators all that kind of stuff there's even a 10 round magazine which is quite rare but if you find it you can load this thing up with twice as many rounds whoever you ask who plays Tarkov will probably either tell you they prefer the Saiga 12 gauge or the MP 153 as their preferred shotgun now after tossing it up I'm going with the Saiga just because when I use both guns I find that reloading with a magazine even though it's kind of annoying to reload each mag when you're done is just faster and more convenient than having to put in each shell individually. So even though with the MP153 you can just load each shell, you only need one inventory slot in your rig just to load them. I find that when I run out of shots in that gun it takes a lot longer to reload into a full clip. And in that time I'd rather have a full mag ready to go and then I can just reload them later when the fight's over. So for that reason I'm going to give it to the Saga. Now the downsides with the Saga are obviously since it's a shotgun Medium and long range is basically a no-go. The odd medium shot you might get lucky, but long range you can just forget about it. And most medium ranges you can really just forget about too. Now the pretty big downside is that you can only buy it with level 2 traders. Now the positive thing is that you can find it pretty often on scavs. It's quite a common scav weapon. And maybe the odd time kind of in a weapon box or something. But you can only buy it at level 2. So it means it might be a bit harder to acquire at those low levels. Buckshot is also really ineffective against armor. So if someone's fully armoured, you're pretty much going to be right in their face and even then you probably won't do much work as you think it might. So it doesn't penetrate armour really at all, so even low level armours will pretty much stop the buckshot quite easily. So that's why you need to go for the face or for the legs if they're wearing a face shield. And like I said, you need to reload the mags, so unlike the pump shotgun or the semi-auto shotgun, which is the 133 or 153 respectively, you can't just load in every shell, you have to reload each mag, which takes a bit of time, but like I said, I prefer having the faster reload in a fight. 
So the alternative I'm giving to the Saiga, you might have guessed, is the MP-153. So it's a really good shotgun, really similar except it has an internal magazine instead of the external ones of the Saiga. So it means you can reload each shot, you don't need to reload each magazine each time. But the individual shot reload is a lot slower than just putting in a new mag. I prefer the Saiga, but kind of do you do you, whatever you prefer you can go with, they'll perform pretty similarly. So that's my top three. In my opinion, they're the best guns to get started at those low levels. You should be able to find at least one of them pretty much any raid you do. And most commonly, you'll find probably a couple all around. Now, a couple of things I just want to throw out at the end here. A couple of guns I would stay away from. Um, so a common gun that a lot of new players probably go towards is the AKS-74U. So that's the submachine gun. Now, while it will kill people, especially in close quarters, it's not too bad. I find the recoil was just enormous and it's too big to really warrant using, especially at even medium range. It can get quite difficult to manage. So you need a lot of attachments to kind of pull that recoil down and by that point you're probably going to be level 15 anyway, so there's going to be better guns to use. And also something to watch out for is the VPO 209. So it looks pretty similar to an AKM or a VEPA 136. But you might notice that the game actually says it's a shotgun and that's because the barrel is not actually rifled. It basically just fires a slug. So it's not a good gun. It's really loud. It's inaccurate. Generally, I just stay away from it. You can pretty much always find a better gun. Now, lastly, at the end of the video here, I wanted to throw in what is definitely objectively the best gun in Tarkov by far. It's not even close to be honest. The first three I gave, they're subjectively my favorite, but it's not even fair really. There is one gun that is just 10 shoulders above everything else. You can get it from level one. You can buy it for 5,000 rubles, cost nothing. It's the greatest gun of all time. And that of course is the Toz. So the Toz 106, it's a bolt action shotgun, 20 by 70 millimeter. Super easy to acquire, you can pay 5k rubles and buy it, it's on scavs. It's super destructive, any situation, any range it will just destroy. Essentially just fires little mini nuclear warheads, just demolishes anything in your path. Each magazine has two shots, so you got two chances of destruction. And with a 100% success rate, I don't know why you'd even need two to be honest, one will do it. It looks amazing, it's super compact so you can carry one in each hand, it's cheap and it's so loud that it just promotes dominance. If you fire this thing near scabs, PMCs, they're just going to ult F4 uninstall the game just like that. It's honestly, they should get rid of it, it's too good. And downsides, well there's none, what a, st what a stupid question, this gun is the best. Like there's nothing bad about it, honestly if I could just use the Toz, I probably would except that I just feel bad, it feels like you're cheating when you use the Toz. Now we all know what the Toz stands for, um, it's, I'll put it up on the screen anyway, but to be honest, and you know who, you know what it is, I don't need to tell you what the Toz stands for. Just look at this gameplay I captured, seriously, this thing just tears up and from this gameplay, uh, you won't even use the guns I've suggested, you'll just go straight to the Toz, check this out. Yeah, okay, you know what? I think I was wrong with the Toz. Um, I think I've got a new acronym for it. There it is there. Yeah, I've been lied to. Uh, I wouldn't use the Toz at all. I don't even know why I bought so many of these things. Like, what was I thinking? Oh, man, yeah, the Toz is not good. Um, don't use the Toz. Use the other three I suggested. Oh, man. Oh, well, everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this wee video. If you've got some guns that you think are better than these, then chuck them down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And otherwise, just keep an eye out. Next weekend, we've got the new retrospective. So I'm going to leave a hint at the end of this video as to what the retrospective is. If you think you know what it is, leave it down below, and I'll congratulate you on the next video if you're right. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a week. Cheers.